All right, pre-trib rapture moment number 24. Question, what if the pre-trib rapture doesn't happen? Say, well, you would actually consider this thing, Brian? Sure, I'm open-minded. And let's just think about this. What if this whole pre-trib rapture thing is a lie? And this is what you'll get from a lot of the post-trib teachers. They'll be like, what if it doesn't happen? A lot of these pre-trib preachers, when it doesn't happen, they're going to, you know, receive the Antichrist and receive the mark and all this other stuff. And they'll put that thing out there like this is, oh, you're trusting the pre-trib lie, the pre-trib fib, you know, and you're going to be shocked when it doesn't actually happen. Okay, well, let's think about this for a minute. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Let's read this quick here. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So you have somebody escaping? Yeah. Proven to preach your rapture, but let's just continue here. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. Now, it's very interesting, because this whole thing of what if we're wrong. Well, the thought is there, most post-tribbers think that if the pre-trib rapture doesn't happen, then we'll be so deceived that we'll just go on and take the mark of the beast. Because we'll think that the Antichrist is Jesus Christ. Um, there's a problem with that. You see, because as a pre-trib rapture believer and teacher, I'm not looking for Jesus Christ to show up on the earth. I'm looking to be called up. Now, if all of a sudden I don't get called up and this guy shows up that looks like Jesus Christ and people worship as Jesus Christ and he shows up on the earth, I'm not going to go, well, bless God, I guess the... the the rapture happened already or something, and, and now I'm Jesus is here and I'll worship him. <laughs> How could I be deceived? How could we as preacher rapture believers be deceived? I mean, if it doesn't happen and all of a sudden this guy shows up, we're not going to accept him as Jesus Christ. And it's interesting because I've seen this thing time and time again. Preacher rapture believers are the ones that are looking for the signs. We're looking to get out of here. We're anxious to see Jesus Christ. We're not deceived. We're not the ones that are going, oh no, oh, oh, the Antichrist is coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. We're going, oh wow, Jesus is coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. So, even if we were wrong, and we're not, but even if we were wrong, there's no danger for us as pre-trib rapture believers. We're not going to be deceived. We're not looking for the Antichrist, or, I'm sorry, we're not looking for Jesus Christ to show up on the earth. We're looking for Jesus Christ to take us out of here. So, this argument that, uh, what if you're wrong? It doesn't mean anything. What if preacher rapture belief is wrong? Well, then we'll see the Antichrist and we'll say, oh, okay. But, of course, that's not going to happen because the Antichrist can't show up until the body of Christ has been removed. Read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm sorry for you if you're deceived by this whole thing. If you're believing that the Antichrist is going to show up and that Jesus isn't going to take us out of here before this, and he's going to pour out wrath on his own body, um, you are in darkness. You see, there's an awful lot of lost people that are all concerned about the development of the New World Order. You know, and they're going to fight the forces of the New World Order and all this stuff like that. They're all excited about the the concentration camps and the NSA and, and all these other people spying on us and all this other stuff. And they took their eyes off Jesus Christ. The next big world event to happen is the catching away of the body of Christ. And it's a comfort. 
I'm getting real sick and tired of this earth down here, and I know a lot of you are too. And you know what? We don't have to put up with it for very much longer. And the Lord's going to catch us away from here. It's going to happen. And uh, you say, well, I don't believe it's going to happen, Brian, and I think you're, you're going to be shocked. No, I won't be shocked. You're going to be the one that's shocked when you're yanked out of here and you weren't ready for it. And when you get up there and Jesus is going to say, why weren't you looking for me? Why did you give up hope? Why did you live like the lost world? Lost world's not looking for the rapture. They're looking at all the global economic crisis and what to do and a financial meltdown and when the stuff hits the fan and all this stuff like that. There's lost people all over the internet talking about that. They aren't looking to have Jesus Christ take them out of here. Better think about that. 